the, yeah, that looks like a brand new Keen, huh? Yeah, this, uh, the three inch, um, we got the hopper here, and we've got the holes up in here in case we want to use it as a high banker to shovel into it. Um, and the material comes up through the hose, drops into the Grizzly here, and then the rest of the material, the finer stuff, goes down and runs down through the sluice box. Um, I kind of like this setup a little bit better than the standard dredge because it washes once coming up through the bottom, washes again, and then washes a third time going down through the sluice. All right, so, so all the big rocks just slide out, yep. all the little stuff just goes in, yep. the water rinses it down yep. into there. there. And then back up in here, we've got, we've got a nugget trap up in here, which is a nice little thing. Anytime you get something big, it'll drop into here and stay. And you can see the riffles are pretty well packed up with black sands. Oh, that's all the fine stuff. It's that punch plate and just yeah. drops right there. See a little piece right in there. Oh, yeah. A little piece right there. And there's a few more in there. I got a nice one right there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Not bad. Oh, look at that one. That one right there. Oh, I didn't see that one either. Yeah, Maybe yeah. we did better than we thought we did today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's, there's plenty. That's just a black mat. You probably got to got some of the riffles, I bet. Yep. Yep. So, so yeah, it looks like you're into a lot of... Uh, I see a lot of pyrite, a lot of uh, garnet, black sand, so mm -hmm. you hit a nice hole. So this is pretty easy to set up? Yeah, the setup is really easy. Um, probably, it I would say as easy as any dredge, any dredge. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got a couple more pieces, but it's, it's more lightweight and it's definitely a little bit more versatile yeah. um, than your standard dredge. Um, obviously, I don't have air, so I use a snorkel, so I'm limited to how far I can go down, but it doesn't stop you from getting any better gold than anybody else in the river. Yeah, yeah. Is it pretty much stock, or did you change any of the mats around or anything? Uh, no, it's stock just the way it is. Um, the way Keen sets it up is, I believe, is, is probably the, the, the best. Um, the, the fine gold, or fly poop, if you will, is we get a lot of that, yeah. you know, and it adds up over time. The only change we are going to make uh, next year is we're going to run we're going to run vortex matting up here in the pre matting. Um, we're hearing really good things about the vortex uh, matting underneath, uh, just beyond the nugget trap. A lot of people are doing a little bit better, and the fines aren't getting passed down into the ripples. So we're going to give that a shot next year. Yeah, yeah. We're going to. Is there that. anything you don't like about it, or is it pretty much work the, the way you like it to? No, you know, I don't think there's anything I don't like about it. You know, one of the things that we did, if you take a look over on this side here, is to make our setup a little bit easier. What we went ahead and did, and this was recommended by somebody else, is we put levels on it. So what we did is we set the sluice box to the degrees that it needs to go at. And so every time that we set up, all we got to do is match the bubble to the pitch and we're good. That's a great idea. Nice. And we also, we put one on the back side, but it's kind of missing right now because of a shovel incident. Uh-oh. Uh but we're <laughs> going to replace that. So that's what we go by. And uh, it's worked. Um, I definitely keep my, or I should say my wife, Pat, here. She, she's my top <laughs> side person. She, uh, she keeps her eye on the levels. She keeps her eye on the sluice box, motor, pump. Um, you know, she, she's doing all the work. I'm just the guy moving rocks and sucking up dirt. Awesome. She does, awesome. She does most of the work. And there ain't a lot of guys that got their wives out here. So yeah, I know. Lucky. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Yeah. So she's you, a keeper. You must like coming out here then? I do. Yeah. And over here, we got the heartbeat of the system. All right. This is a Honda 5.5. Uh, with uh, Keen's um, pump on it. Uh, we did make some changes uh, to make life a little bit easier. Um, on the, the, the prime hole here, we put a Y on it so we can just crack it open, prime, and then close it instead of actually screwing something out. We found it was a little more efficient. Oh, okay. Um, the other thing too is uh, it makes clean outs a little bit easier. I can take another hose, crack this open while it's running, and I take the hose and clean out. Or I can use the ho uh, hose down in the hole as a super blaster. Yeah. So I can just blast the material right into the nozzle. Nice, nice. That's good. The other change that we made up here, um, 
14 comes standard with a iron fitting. We went with the plastic fitting and we went with the uh, gator locks. We use the gator locks on our high pressure line uh, here and also up on the nozzle. Does that make it just easier to easier, transport and yep, connect? Easier, and yep, easier connect, quick disconnect. Saves you a lot of time from uh, scrunching the hose on and using the um, uh, hose clamps. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so it's, it speeds up your time on that. The, uh, the other thing that we like to do is we always put it in a bucket and it serves quite a few purposes. The first one is it keeps the motor dry, keeps the oil out of the environment, and it keeps the gas out of the environment during refuel. Um, we found it really efficient. So this pan doesn't, we don't use it for clean out or anything. We just keep it and we uh, just bring it up into the truck and keep it level. And then we have an area back at home that we clean it out in so that we're not putting anything uh, into the environment. Yeah, that's a great idea. We're just trying to keep it clean. Just in case you have a spill or something goes wrong. Exactly. You know, Self-contained or anything. That's yep. pretty nice. Uh, so you, is that a Honda motor? Do you know what size? Yep, this is a 5.5. Oh yeah, okay. So it's at uh, GX 140? GX. Oh, GX 200. 200. Oh yeah, okay. Yep. We're happy with it. Um, we were recommended with a Honda motor uh, through a lot of other uh, prospectors. Um, it's a little bit more money, but it's worth the money in the end because it starts on one pole just about every time. So yeah, so you never had a problem. Never had a problem. Always starts up, yeah. Yeah, you just got to make sure that it's at level at all times so the automatic shutoff and the oil doesn't keep kicking on, which is another lesson that we just learned recently because I've only been at this a couple of years, so we're still in the learning curve. I'm still a rookie. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've had that happen. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, one of the other things I wanted to ask you, too, is um, how you go about your cleanups. How, how do you, uh, at the end of the day, do you just do it in the river? Do you take it home? Or? Yeah, at the end of the day, we have, uh, we have another bucket, like the one the motor in, and we just put it at the end of our sluice here, we just put it right at the end of the sluice, and then we'll pull out the nugget trap first, then we'll take out our Hungarian ripples next, we take out our, our uh, mesh, then we take out our carpet, our miner's moss, and then our pre-matting up there, and we get kind of a good idea way up in the top of the box what the gold's gonna be like for the day. Um, but when we're doing it, the green mat and the miners, the miners moss, we like to take it and stretch it and slap it into the water. So we get every ounce of material that might be embedded down into there. And the green carpet, we take that and we smash it into the water as much as that we can. And at the end of every year, we'll take that green carpet and we'll burn it on something tin and take those ashes and then we'll pan those ashes out because there's always a little bit of gold impregnated into this uh, green matting. Oof. So, and we get to start the year with some fresh green matting on top of it. <laughs> to start, we have the water that goes up into the pump. It's got a check valve on it. So it only can open up and never close back so we don't get any air in the, in the system. And the pump fires it down this line here. Fires it right down the skinny line right here and makes a quick turn and that's where you get your pressure and it pulls the material all the way up the green hose and up into the grizzlies like we discussed earlier. Now the advantage to having this than a regular jet or venturi uh, uh, jet as you would is that when I'm in the water, say on this rock, say if I'm working over in here and I need to get over here, I can just simply put my hand on the nozzle on the end of it and go back into the water and I won't lose any pressure. There'll be no air into the line. Yeah. So that's a little advantage. Yeah. The disadvantage to this is that as you'll find when you're when you start dredging, you'll get what's called the wall. And you can see across here I've already I have a wall. And this part here will always butt into that and it'll always get material falling in that you don't necessarily want. Uh. So what we do is I'll Holler my wife the tool, I'll loosen up, I'll spin it, and I'll cock it just a little bit up and keep this on the bottom, and I can get up into the air that I need to. So it's a small inconvenience, but we get the job done either way. Yep, yep. Um, this hole that we've been working, you're standing on the first big boulder um, that uh, Martin and I, we moved. Wow, you moved that thing? <laughs> yep, together. Wow, that's and a big one. All these boulders here we've moved, all these rocks through here we've moved. 
Um, this was our biggest feat this morning. We're about half hour into the job, I dredged out all the rock. I undercut it very carefully. Um, one of the tips for undercutting is when you're undercutting a rock, say here's your rock and you're undercutting, and you're dredging out the material and you want to roll that boulder, you should always stick a tool or a rock underneath there just to hold it to see what's going on and undercut, undercut. And if you can't pull that rock out or your tool, you know that it's ready to go. So that at that time we go to the back side with a pry bar and roll it, or if you got a buddy, the two of you can roll it up that way. So this is my little accomplishment. I'm working on two down in here. They're either gonna be coming out soon. Um, I'm down to clay, oh, two and a half, three feet. Um, the material's really hard packed. Um, I have a couple of rocks here, for sure have not seen the light of day. Um, based upon the black sands uh, that are coming out of here um, and the, the impactment of right down, I have about a half inch of impacted dirt and I've literally had to take another rock and put my nozzle on the bottom and scrape it into the nozzle. It's so difficult to get off the bottom and that really to me signifies that none of these boulders have seen the light of day or a dredge nozzle. Yeah, so that's good, yeah. We're hopeful for a little bit better gold than normal, but... This is your first, second, third day? This is our third day. Third day? Third day. So you've been working on this section for the last three days, yeah? Yep. Uh, I'm a firm believer, a lot, of pe a lot of guys here, if they don't do well in a hole, they'll move or they'll go down up the river. I'm a firm believer stick, of stick and stay and make it pay. Yeah. Um, I start a hole and I go with it. Uh, my wife has a big say in uh, where we go in the river. Um, <laughs> she also has a big say about where, where I should be working in the hole based upon the color of the material going up into the uh, into the uh, dredge itself, into the sluice box. She um, she's got a good eye for it. Yeah. She, she can tell me, you know, oh, it's running good. We look good. Stay in there, and if I'll move, she'll hit me with a rock, and we'll go get back over. Or, or if I'm hogging too much material, she'll hit me with a rock again. Stop hogging the material. So. So it you pays know, to have a team member, huh? <laughs> she's the brains of the operation. I'm just the guy in the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. How you got into it? How'd you get started? Did you just like uh, pick up a pan or somebody get you? Uh, or... Actually, I, I was watching this crazy guy, uh, Tom Massey, on TV, and I thought the guy was nuts. I used to watch him before I went to work. And uh, then the big modern day gold rush started happening up in Alaska in the TV shows. And I started watching him a little bit more, and I didn't think he was crazy anymore. Um, so. I had a friend of mine at work who came in and he showed me his vial of gold, uh, Jim Mariansky. And uh, we worked together for a short time. And uh, after about four years or so, I got a little more interested in prospect then. And I had already gone out. I bought my uh, my starter kit from the GPAA. And I, I went took it another step. I got a sluice box. I'd go out on the rivers around me. And I said, well, if I just get some black sands and the ripples, I'll be happy. So I go out and dig and classify and run it through the little sluice box about this big and sure enough I got some black sands. So I had enough of that, I go, boy, it's time I actually found some gold. So I gave Jim a call and he was really excited. He uh, took me up to Vermont and uh, I got my first bit of gold within five minutes when I was there. Just the smallest little piece of speck of fly poop and uh, I was just excited. Gold fever instantly. I spent the next year up in Vermont with him and other friends, uh, prospecting and digging and whatnot. And uh, so then I started talking to people on Facebook and online. I heard I heard about this dredging thing up here in New Hampshire on the, on the Wham, the Wild Amanusik River. And uh, you know, I, I found some friends um, on the. Uh, on the Northeastern Prospect page. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, we came up, we stayed in Cabin One, we had our little sluice box, and we spent the week up here digging and running. <clears throat> we didn't do very well, but we didn't expect to. <coughs> and uh, this is where the part where my wife is definitely a keeper. Um, we're sitting on the couch during the winter, and she looks at me, she goes, you know, we need a dredge to move more material. I'm like, I love you. And that's what we did. We ended up getting a dredge. And I go, well, I said, if we're going to get a dredge, we might as well get a camper and go all in. She goes, yeah, that's a good idea because I like camping too. Win-win well, situation. So here we are. Uh, but it's four or five years later now. Yeah. We've been up here for two years dredging. We take, I take all my vacation time, my three weeks, and we come up here and this is what we do. We come up here and we dredge together out on the river. 
and uh, we just have a great time. We meet wonderful people. That's cool. It's, the weather is always nice. The water is nice. A little cold in the first part of the season, but nice seven millimeter wetsuit and uh, keeps you toasty. Yeah, this time of year is pretty nice. <laughs> and this year it's we're almost at 90 degrees today. A nice breeze, no bugs. Uh, what people may think New Hampshire is, it's not. There's not a lot of bugs up here this high. And yeah. uh, it's just beautiful. You know, That's it's, cool. uh, it's, it's a great way to to do it. It's not for everybody, because um, uh, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It is a lot of hard work. It's just all the boulders that we moved out of the out of the river. And uh, you're in the sun, you know, for most of the day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's not too many people doing it, but uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. And like I said, the, the mining community is a, it's a small community. And you'll find friends no matter what. So uh, get involved in prospecting. It's a good time. Yeah, definitely. All right, to start of a new trip, uh, I'm here with Martin today. We're working together and uh, gonna make a big hole. Uh, we've been at it for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. No, about an hour. Hour and a half, so, oh, whatever. There he is, we're doing clean outs. All right, this is a brand new spot. What do you think of it so far? Flakes, nothing really great. I mean, we got a couple small pieces in I there. There you go, one there. Yeah, the smalls. Yeah, yeah, some smalls. It's not bad. There. We've only been here for like an hour, hour and a yeah, half. Yeah, no, it hasn't been that long, but no. Some there. Yeah, got a little bit in there. There's probably some stuff hiding up under the riffle. Yeah, definitely a bunch of, bunch of pyrite and a bunch of garnet. Cleaning out a bunch of lead that the fishermen left behind. Oh, them. look at that. So that's always good, cleaning out the river for them. Well, for all of us. Oh, really. you're getting some, some good pyrite. I haven't seen any much pyrite yeah, in my box. Yeah, a lot of pyrite, biggest pyrite. Yeah, it's that's starting to show up too. So yeah, there's 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 some gold in there. Not bad. Not, not bad, bad for an bad. hour. Not bad Jeez. for an hour. Sometimes no. I get that in a day. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go see. Uh, I only got a couple flakes of mine. Look at that tailing. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? You got a couple going. All you got right, one, on two. We've been moving all around because it's shallow. All right, let's see what I got. I got a couple flakes. I got uh, I got one decent one there, one decent one there. Ooh, a little picker right there. That's a little nice little one. I got a little picker. Nothing all crazy. Right. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad spot. I, I think it's just when you hit it. A little guy right there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing too bad actually. Yeah. It must be getting uh it must be getting more coarse as we go uh down down. Maybe it's just too fast in that uh yeah, I mean, in that know, channel. No, no. Still beats my best day of working. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, I'm gonna uh, start in the rain here, so I'm gonna put the dredge back together and uh, continue in the hole. I'll uh, get some underwater video.
No, it's the same one. Just a little one. It was neat picking it up for a though. Look how fucking that course is. That, that is course. Yeah. Anything that's that small and that thick. Didn't move very far. Hold on. Damn shiny. Yeah, no, that's part of a, a lure. I got the rest of the oh. lure up here. Oh, that's a brass lure. Yeah, yeah, part of a brass lure. Clean, oh. clean in the river, brother. Clean in the river. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing. You like doing that. Yeah. Huh. That's right. I'm going that direction. I like that direction. Whether it produces or not, oh well. Yeah, I bet you. I bet you as soon as you get in line with that bedrock, it's going to be a lot of low pressure in the on the yeah, high water, I, right? I agree, that's why I see right there, even with this rock here twisted, I thought there'd be something in there. If you do get a low pressure behind that. I would think, yeah, as we go in towards the bank, it should get better. Yeah, it should. It should. Plus, I don't know how many people have been all in here. Obviously, somebody's been right here. Yeah. But they didn't come back, and that's usually a sign when they don't come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh, good thing. <laughs> Keep trying. I keep cleaning out though. Every 10 minutes I gotta come up and clean out. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise I'll be buried. Yeah, I just did mine. Here's what it is. Alright, so we're here having lunch. And Martin noticed <laughs> Martin notices a nice cracked piece of bedrock over here, so crumps it up. So we decided to uh, take the crowbars out, lift it up, and now he's uh, found some nice mud under there. Mm. Is it is it clay or is it mud? Or? Well, it's mud, but it's not sand. Look at the difference in the color of the, of the sand. Nothing took two of us to lift, so I don't think anyone's been under there. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice gritty, sandy. You see the difference in color? Yeah. Oh, you're getting it, hitting it hard? Oh, boy, am I hitting it hard. Really? Oh, yeah. Jeez, I was barely 50 feet from there and I got skunked. Am I at least four grams right now? Maybe more. Come on. You gotta no, start wet. You gotta start weighing your stuff, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta scale away we'll it later. I don't care. Go ahead. Yeah, you found this cool little crevice right here. We just lifted it up at the bars. Oh, did you break that piece? Yeah. Yeah. Nice, it's just something in there. Oh, well, we haven't really got to it yet. We just, just started at the top. Okay, well, the There's a black sand there that we picked up. All them holes right there. Nah, nothing. Really? You gotta be kidding me. I got a yeah. few flakes, nothing crazy. That I had to move this big flat forward. Oh my god, I don't know how I Oh, you move that th that big one? Jeez. I gotta get the rest of it. Wow. I just, that's where I found another one of my uh, pickers. Yeah, you said you found you a nice coarse little piece. Oh boy, did I! I picked it right off the ground. It was in between these little rocks. Yeah. I picked it right up. Look at it, baby! Yeah. Oh yeah, we gotta check that out later. 
Oh, yep, there yep, and there. yep. There's a couple, probably small, more, more small ones in there. And that's just on top. That's just that's on not top, even, yeah. That's not even getting down to it. Let's open that baby up. <laughs> there she is. Look at the size of that thing. It's probably a thousand pounds, easy. Oh, yeah, that's granite. Oh, it looks like there's going to be a lot of dirt under there. Mama, you're already on the gold, baby. we got to put the wife to work. Yeah, oh, she, <laughs> oh, this is not work for her. This is play time. She's got five kids. <laughs> And me. Yeah. There you go, Will. So you're two kids. Hey, I got the really, I got skips off. A big, big pry bar. Here. I wonder what you guys are doing over here. Mm -hmm. You want the camera? I'll probably move this. I'll just see it. Okay. I'm trying to find I'll just Hold on, there's a ridge in here that I think if I can get on this ridge. Oh, why are they taking a picture? Did what? Document. To show you what to do. Yep. I'm getting close to that bottle, Jack. Maybe, actually, if I can put my foot right in hand. Yep. I think I'll get my best. Ready? Yep. Like you know, yeah, go ahead and hold it well. Yeah. Now we need that come along to put it on the tip and flip it. You know what I mean? Okay. 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 You got the come along? Put it on that tree, hook it right under the nose and flip it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what we have now is... Okay. I like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Starting to get the gold, pal. The frozen. Gold in there. Look at that, huh? Nice. We're, we're on top. We yeah, haven't yeah, we're, even, we're on top. You didn't even scrape the body, man. Huh? No, no. We're on top. All right, yeah. Let's, so we uh, got that. We'll tie that onto there, and then we'll wrap down that tree up there. We need. We got to flip it. We got to tie it up here. Onto this side. Yeah, you put it by the roof.
Yeah. I'm just trying to help free it up. Yeah, hold on. The chain's moving. Yeah. Oh, that's like Illinois. Okay. Scoop. And. And there we go. Stuff right there. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. That's nice and compact. Oh yeah. No one's been there for a long time. No one's ever been there. You can see the color on the rock itself. This coloration. Yeah. Oh yeah, one right on the surface already. That's cool. Yeah, a little black sand. Yep. Some gold showing up. Man, it's a little bit starting to show up. Doesn't look like a lot of gold. Mm. Oh yeah, there's a couple flakes in there. Mm. That was on the side. Who knows what's on the bottom? Yeah. That bottom of that crack was all full of gravel. Oh yeah. Yeah, I gotta get into the bottom. I just wanted to see what was on the side, get it at least a feel. There you go. Yeah, was there snuffer? Yeah, we're gonna hit the <laughs> stuff and put that in. We're gonna go back to work. Hey, we just begun to play. <laughs> that's gonna keep you busy for a while. Yeah, that's gonna be... I might stay away from my dredging for a while. I'm doing better doing this, right? <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, that's not bad. That's like eight, nine pieces right there on the side. Yeah, there's a lot of gravel on the bottom of that hole. So well, look how much black sand and everything has been collected in there over the years too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple of specks in there, but I guess I'm not going to be worried about them. Well, you got to give some back, right? Yeah. <laughs> This is where you find the big stuff, pal. Yeah. If we're lucky, we'll find some really nice stuff. So you're hitting the bottom right now? Yeah, I mean, close. You're getting the bottom of the stuff? All yeah, right. I'm in, I'm in some okay. mucky stuff, yeah. I think the bottom's going to be good. Well, I think i got to wait before I actually get to it, to be honest with you. I think I'm just... Oh, there's a lot of mud in there, huh? Yeah. And don't forget, we got the other side here. I got to dig out. Yeah, yeah let's give that a shot. Just see if there's anything in there. Come on, where's the nuggets? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> There we go. That's going to be a big one. Heavy. Yeah. She's heavy, the old girl. All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. The one thing I don't like about the bazooka though is like you don't get any feedback until you're done. One oh, flake. Look at that. Really? A nice little piece. There you go, a little picker in there. Huh? Yeah, a little Sweet. flake. A lead fishing weight. Yeah, got another fishing weight. Yeah. Looking good. Hey, Pop, you were right. <laughs> See that thing? That's the, what you're looking for. There you go. Yeah, that's a nice little piece. A little thick. It's pretty thick. Pretty coarse. Not bad, not bad. There it is. Still and, not all and way. you're not done yet. You're still... uh, I don't stop. If they get bigger, <laughs> I keep going until they stop. <laughs> that's getting when bigger. When they stop, I stop. If they don't bigger. stop, I don't stop. There you go. There you cool. Go. Well, it's, uh, it's like 4 o'clock. Uh, Martin left like half hour ago. Just, uh, 
going to head back in the hole. Well, I guess I'm done for the day. My tailing file is broken surface and I have an island now. Uh, yeah, anyways, it's like 5.30 now, so I'm calling it quits today. Just going to let this baby clear out. Yeah, I'm just going to run it for a little bit and uh, I'm going to pack up and head back to camp and do my clean out. So I'll see you uh, back at camp.